Yes, yeah, so thank you so much, Jonathan, for that introduction. As he said, my name is Alicia Green, and I'm the manager of supplier diversity at NGLCC, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. So I am so excited to introduce our panelists or our uh, presenters for today, um, Liz and Heather. Um, so Liz, Liz Whitehead and Heather Cox co-founded Diversity Masterminds, an online curriculum focused on building a roadmap to certification success. Liz Whitehead is the CEO of 12.5, a business development consultancy that equips diverse businesses to leverage their certification and benefit from corporate supplier diversity initiatives. With a client roster that includes Fortune 500 companies, as well as certified business enterprises who are actively looking to leverage their certification, Liz supports her clients in reaching their goals through uh, facilitation, consulting, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. The recipient of awards including WPEO's 2018 and 2019 WBE Connection Award for completing the most done deals with other certified Weebies and 2019 Outstanding Women's Business Advocate Award. Liz is also an angel investor who mentors startup companies. Um, we also have Heather Cox, who is the co-founder and president of Certify My Company and co-mastermind of Diversity Masterminds. Certify My Company is a diversity consultancy that helps women, minority, veteran, disabled, and LGBT business owners earn certifications that create powerful opportunities for business growth while helping um, F1000 corporate diversity executives create a rich roster of highly qualified diverse vendors. When she is not working with diverse business owners, she enjoys sharing not so quiet moments with her ever so innocent little ones. Her husband, number one fan and partner in, par in parenthood rounds out the edges of an entrepreneurial life. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Heather and Liz. Thanks, Alicia. How are you? Yeah. <laughs> we always love interacting with Alicia and the crew over at NGLCC. <laughs> <laughs> so Liz, you want to kick it off? Sure, I'll kick it off. And, um, and yeah, I, I wanted to talk about to how I how we came to NGLCC. Um, I was familiar with NGLCC in my time at WeConnect International, and we worked very closely with NGLCC. And what I realized about the organization, going from working for a regional organization to an international organization, a global one, was that NGLCC not only had their eye on the prize in terms of what they wanted the business owners to get out of it, but they also knew Let's use, let's use the things that are working. Just, we don't have to worry about the things that aren't working and partner, partner, partner. I think NGLCC does that magnificently. Right. And so Heather and I are always thrilled when we get a chance to um, you know, use our expertise to help the LGBTVEs uh, be even better suppliers. Yeah, I'd say, so that was my comment also. I came to, to NGLCC years ago, and actually Robin Streisand, for anyone who knows her, she owns The Mix and Titanium Worldwide. I had come to her when we were starting the company, Certify My Company, to ask her, and she said, you need to do NGLCC stuff. You need to be involved with NGLCC. So in about 12 seconds later, I was a member of NGLCC New York, and I stayed in contact with them, and I did a lot of work with them. And again, to Liz's point, and you also see it's so fantastic about playing nice with everybody, with partnering, sharing best practices, sharing information, and making sure that everybody, regardless of their diverse category, succeeds because, you know, all boats rise when the tide comes in or whatever that expression is, and GLCC gets it. So that's why we love, love, love doing any projects we can with them. Awesome. I love having you. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And I have the chat box open. If anyone has questions, feel free to chat, chat us up. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is business unusual. It's very topical. So what we do when business unusual becomes business as usual. And, um, you know, apropos of the, the moment of silence we had earlier, we were, you know, we, when we started this, we were going to talk about, okay, the business disruptions as a result of COVID-19, but that's not the only thing people are dealing with. Um, people are dealing with nationwide social justice protests and events, and that you know, people aren't leaving that 
at home when they go to work because guess what they're still at home <laughs> um but but that's even true under typical business circumstances so what we're going to talk about is how do suppliers work with companies that have unusual challenges or in situations where every company is having these challenges how are companies that still want diverse suppliers conducting outreach at this time and on a practical level how does supplier diversity work when the events are canceled so we're going to go through a little bit about that and and like i said we we're going to talk about business disruptions due to COVID 19. we're also going to talk a little bit about how to address the social justice events and protests that are happening um, and this is also good to keep in mind when a particular company that you might be doing business with or want to be doing business with is having a public relations challenge independent of these things these things happen um, in some ways business unusual is always business as usual there's always something um, popping up that that you need to be aware of so we're going to talk about that and then sometimes it's just a matter of companies having new goals or mandates uh, do they have a new supplier diversity program do they have new goals for supplier diversity within that program and how do you how do you become a, a trusted supplier in that? So the way to, we're gonna, and the slides are there to help guide the conversation. Again, use the Q&A, use the chat window, um, because we wanna make this interactive too. So I'm gonna ask you all some questions as well as we go forward. But what we're gonna talk about in terms of what can you do now? What, what should you be doing now to reach out to your supplier diversity contacts. Heather and I started Diversity Masterminds because we recognized that this is a challenge, that you can get your certification, but if you don't use it, if you're not reaching out, or even if you are, even if you feel like you're doing all the right things, you might not be getting the kind of return or results that you need on that certification investment. So we know the power of certification, and we want to make it work for you. Heather, do you want to talk any more about the origins of diversity masterminds? I mean, you said exactly right. When we, you know, for the last almost 12 years, Certify My Company has sort of been certifying thousands and thousands or facilitating certifications, I should say, for thousands of thousands of diverse businesses. And the number one negative feedback we get is I got nothing out of my certification. I'm not recertifying, whatever it is. And I've seen it firsthand, the success, the power that a cert that certification can have for a company. And so when someone would say to me, they're not getting anything out of it, I felt deflated and I knew there had to be some way to support these diverse owned businesses. So I looked and I looked and I looked and there just wasn't a solution that I felt was the ultimate solution, meaning it didn't make you travel to far distances. You didn't have to give up whole entire days in order to take classes. You didn't have to, um, you know, like leave your families for weeks at a time with some of these um, executive classes like you do. And you also, there was nothing that lets you have peer interaction with other entrepreneurs who are also diversity certified. So I had known Liz for about a decade and I knew that she had so much expertise in this, in this spot, in this area, and that she would be the perfect partner for this project. So here we are. And thank God businesses have far exceeded their goals from what they get out of diversity masterminds. Yeah. So, so where you are, so that brings us to the first thing you can do, which is what information can you gather? Um, one of the first things we like to do with our diversity masterminds folks is set their expectations, manage their expectations of what they can and can't expect. Um, and so what you all are doing here is you are gathering that information. You're taking that first step, which is great. The webinar Wednesdays is key to that. And I, I think that's, I think it's also really important not only in terms of, you know, as um, Jonathan just put in the chat, certification matters. It's not just contracts. There's scholarships. There's access to capital. There's mentorship. There's visibility. There's awards for your company. There's all these things. So part of the information you're gathering is, okay, what can I expect from my certification? And if you're thinking, yep, I can expect to meet these corporations. Um, I tell them a little bit about what I do. Then they introduce me to the quote unquote decision maker. That's one, typically not 
how it works. It's usually not that streamlined. Um, and two, you're missing out on all the other opportunities that are there to help build relationships. So if you know the name of the game, business unusual or not, is building relationships so that you can be seen as that trusted supplier. Um, so, so that's the first piece of information. Heather, what did, what did you want to add to that? No, that, that was perfect. No, I was just thinking about everything you're saying. It's so right on. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, then, and then what information can you gather about the particular people that you want to reach out to, right? So in a lot of these, and you know, throughout the business, the diversity masterminds modules, we always talk about your, your corporate targets, your target clients, your targets. And, and really what we're talking about is people, like you're not, your target isn't Merck, your target isn't American Airlines, it is a person at those places that you are building relationships with. So what information can you gather about those people? Right now, um, and, and I've heard this in lots of different venues, you guys might've heard this on other webinar Wednesdays, that people are online right now. People are reaching out to their LinkedIn contacts. They are opening your email newsletters. They are really looking for that engagement and, and connection. So right now, where you might be thinking, first of all, I think you know this week, everyone I've talked to this week is tired already. It's been a long, it's been a long week. <laughs> Emotional week. Right? Um, yeah, it's, it's been a long week. So it's not necessarily a time to reach out and say, hey, here I am, this is what I do. But for the people that you're connected with on LinkedIn, the people that you're following on Twitter, you know, what it, keep that in mind. What is of interest to them? What are they doing? Um, it, it may not be necessarily, I just saw that Therese Thompson from Coca-Cola is hosting a power hour for women of color. You know, there's different things that are going on. People are um, feeling a need to, reach out to give back. And so if you, if Coca-Cola is one of your targets, if you know Therese or want to get to know Therese better, those are some things that you can take advantage of. Um, she's, you know, she for, is, for one, is active on social media. She's got an active Facebook page. She's telling you what she's interested in and just connecting, reaching out to connect is, is a good first step. Um, and I think the best venues for that are LinkedIn, Twitter is also really good for the company websites because you see what's going on right away. Um, I have an example for LinkedIn um, because, well, before I say that, one of, the, one of the other places you can gather information is something that NGLCC gives you, which is the directory of corporations. <laughs> um, and that is, if you're, total, you're like, I don't know, like if you're someone that's like, I could, Get, do anything for anybody. Any of these companies could be my targets. We'll get to that in a second. But start with that list. These are companies that are looking for you and you have the person and the contact information there for you in that directory. Um, yeah, and Heather's asking you guys, what is your favorite social media outlet for connection? So we'd love to hear that from you. I like LinkedIn for this reason. Um, because the supplier diversity people are often moving around a lot. They are, they're a small community, they're moving around. And one of um, my favorite people on LinkedIn is Kate Weaver, formerly with Nestle. I was just thinking about her when you said that, yeah. Yeah, she's another person who gives you all the information that you need to know to reach out to her. Um, and she's a fantastic advocate for diverse suppliers. She's always um, giving you information that you need to know. But this week, I saw it came up on my LinkedIn feed. Kate Weaver is now the Senior Supplier Diversity Manager at Retail Business Services, right? And so mm -hmm. I haven't downloaded a list of corporate members in like over in six weeks, right? So that list is not as up to date as what I got on LinkedIn. So I had the opportunity to congratulate her. We had a little chat because I said, Kate, are you moving again? And she said, well, this is the situation. We had a little chat about that. And it might seem small, but these are the things when you meet the corporations in person, when we do have a chance to meet them again, or when you meet them in a virtual trade show, then they're gonna say, oh yeah, I remember you. I, I, we had a good interaction. You congratulated me. You didn't come at me right away yes. with selling. 
Um, so, so that's, that's something to think about. But when we go to conferences, any conference any of us have ever been to, they instruct us, educate us, tell us whatever verbs you want to use, not, you know, don't start selling right away, right? You need to build that relationship because no one's going to hear you until they know who you are. So it's, and it's even more important when it's in social media, because you can't necessarily see the facial expressions or, you know, if somebody has a bubbly personality or a dry personality, because it just doesn't come across necessarily in your messaging. So that's why those, those, how are you, you know, how are things going for you? Is there anything I can help you with that? You are selling yourself. You may not be selling your product or your company, but those relationships are, those interactions are growing the relationship which when this is all over, and I know people like to say we're never having conferences again, I don't buy it because face-to-face is just too important and people love face-to-face. So we will get back there. And so you want to make sure that they don't, they don't hear your name and go, oh, that is the person that sold to me all the time on LinkedIn or is constantly sending me messages about, you know, what can I buy from them, right? They're going to think of you as the person who checked in on them, who had a human connection. Yeah. Well, we and, also have someone that said that they use Twitter. Yeah, I saw that. That they I, like Twitter a lot for I the think, primary push. I think Twitter. I think Twitter is excellent. I'm much more. I'm much more of a Twitter user than Heather, and Heather's much more. She's bigger on Instagram. Um, right. But um, what I think Twitter. You know, you said LinkedIn is so important for corporate, but Twitter is a great place to get that the overall corporate information, right? Like, for example. When, um, you know, I think one good thing to pay attention to is what are brands doing right now, right? Um, how, how are brands managing this? And a lot of what I saw on Twitter, for example, were the supplier diversity managers retweeting something from their CEOs. Um, mm-hmm. Where, like, that's where the big corporate message is coming out. And so that gives you a good insight into that. Um, you know, and the same thing is true is it's not just now, you know, the, the comp- look at the companies that are saying something meaningful about pride, um, right. you know, who are the companies that seem to be doing something meaningful and they might be the ones that align with your values. So th- those are just some simple things. Um, another thing is sending Google alerts. That's where I find out a lot. I, I have so much. a Google alert for supplier diversity and um, you know, and while we might be saying, oh, there's no events, there's, you know, nothing's going on, that, that Google alert has not calmed down. There's, there's right. stuff going on for you to pay attention to. So, so now that you've gathered your information, you know, one of the things we talked about was like, what, what do you say when you reach out? Like, how are you positioning yourself? You're not going to sell. So what are you doing? And I think this is a time to really get specific. Uh, I mentioned before, you know, if you're like, I can, I can sell to anybody. I can do all of this for everybody. What that is, it could be true in your industry, but what you really want to focus on is what do you want the supplier diversity person to remember you for? In most cases, for most industries, the supplier diversity person is not going to be the end user of what you're doing, of your product or service. They're I'm not saying they're not a decision maker, that's a different thing, but they're not gonna be the end user. So how are you building that advocate for you within that company? And one way to do that is to be really specific about what you do and who you offer it to. It might sound counterintuitive for people um, in terms of what, like, you know, I can do it though. I, I don't wanna miss out on any opportunities. The fact is when they can sit, when they can put you, you're, you're the person like I can do marketing and advertising A to Z, you know, it's, it doesn't separate you. It doesn't make you stand out. But if you're saying I'm doing crisis communications for people around COVID-19 and how they can communicate better with their employees, that's something that they're going to remember. Um, you want to be specific so that they know, um, where they can put you. And then Heather, do you want to talk about being a go-giver? It is one of my favorite topics. I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier when I was talking about uh, saying like, how can we help you? So we have this little expression that we use called being a go-giver, which means that you are looking at how you can help elevate somebody else or how you can support somebody else before 
like you get yours, I guess. Right. So it's, what can I do for you to make your job easier? What can I do for you to make the process that you're going through easier? You know, Liz and I uh, are in a, a little bit of a, um, a unique position that we get to sometimes see behind the curtain, right? We get to see who's behind that curtain, like the wizard is who it is. And oftentimes that wizard is going through a lot of struggles and they have to fight internally for every decision they make. So if us as suppliers can help them, then it will just, it'll help us in the end. If we can say, Hey, I, I read in the news that y'all are struggling with X, Y, and Z. Here's a great solution for you. Even if it's not your business, especially if it's not your business, that's the solution. They now know that you are somebody they can go to. So when it is your business that they need, there's not even a question. You're top of mind immediately because you saved them. So referring somebody else is such a great way to be a go-giver. And it will come back to you, maybe not directly, maybe not in a linear fashion, tenfold. Absolutely. And don't, I would love for you guys to put in the chat um, different, different things that you think you can give. Um, and it doesn't right. just have to be to corporate clients, to your fellow Each other. employees, and to the organizations, um, both the NGLCC and your regional organizations. Um, everybody right now is looking for ways to lift the community up, ways we can help small business owners survive and thrive. If you have a solution for that, you know, we would love, first of all, for you to put it in the chat and then also for you to think about, okay, well, did I reach out to NGLCC New York about this thing that I can do? You know, did I reach out to my regional organization? Um, because again, they might be your conduit to the next opportunity. And now's a really good time to, to build those relationships on the local level by giving back. Um, another reason why I said to put the information in the chat, this is one of my, one of the tips that, that I've learned during our, um, you know, Zoom overload time is that we're not having the events, right? But when you see somebody you know in the chat, then you, you can connect that way. I was on, um, I was on a webinar yesterday and some of you might've been on it too. There were 300 people on it, um, that AARP gave, um, and and so rather than you don't have to be the presenter at, at the thing, if you have something you can offer saying, hey, here's something I can do. People were having a hard time downloading the worksheet that the speaker had sent out. And I was like, well, I can just make it into a PDF and put it in the chat. All right, let's go, let's keep it moving. And people were like, oh, thanks so much, that's great. Like doing that kind of thing is a great way to interact right now when you're not having those in-person conversations. It's also ways I've reconnected with some of um, my diverse supplier friends from around the country. I have a call with someone in Florida, I had a call with someone in Seattle because we saw each other on these webinars and we're like, hey, it's you. <laughs> and not because I was giving the webinar because we were both attending the webinar. So I, I want you guys to have, uh, <laughs> Heather loves picks of food, great. <laughs> um, you know, like, I want you guys to have that opportunity if you have something to give to put that in the chat and, and go from there because you never know where that will take you. Um, I love it. Somebody put in that their online escape room team building. That sounds really fun. Super cool. You know? Yeah. Like, is there something like online escape room? Like, is that something that your fund committees at your companies could use? Just uh, it's, it's a good time. You, you don't want to, we're spending a lot of time on these zooms. You don't want it to be time to, wasted. Um, so, and especially if you can give something back, it's almost your responsibility to do that. So Liz and Heather, we also have a question in the Q&A. Um, Jason, Jason was talking about how, you know, he can't wait to get back to face-to-face um, -face communication. Me too, Jason. And conferences exactly, but um, <laughs> still achieve that same warm presence and connection in dig digitally distanced world. Yeah, he's asking how to do it, or he's saying that's a good idea to do it. Like, how can you? How can you? Mm -hmm. I think it. Well, I mean, I think for most people, it's again just how the simple like, how are you? How have you been? How's life with you, right? Just by knowing a little bit more about how people are going or even just hearing, like I've asked a few colleagues and, and um, 
know, people I know, like, how are you doing? And they're like, well, my formal answer from this organization that I work for is this. My real answer is I'm going nuts. I'm about to give all my children up for adoption, right? So it just depends on the person. And, and just by, you know, having those conversations is really great. Sometimes you can even do a video message. If you can video yourself, then they will see that warmth of your, if you're not a warm personality, they don't try for warmth, right? But if you are a warm personality, if you're a bubbly personality, then you can, you can use your, the video to your advantage and send it, um, you know, even just by taking your phone and be like, hey, I was thinking about you today type of thing, then they'll see your energy, right? So you can use that and you can send messages through almost all the social media platforms. I think too, I, I think that's, I think the video is a, is a great idea. Um, especially if it's one-on-one, -on -one, like a mass sell, selling video is going to be different yeah, than, right. Hey, I was thinking about you. Um, I also think people overlook a lot of times the power of a thank you or a congratulations specifically with the supplier diversity people. Um, you know, thank you so much for hosting this webinar, for hosting this series, um, you know, for hosting this pitch competition, for just judging this pitch competition, you know, that just reaching out via LinkedIn or whatever and saying, thank you, um, you know, I appreciate you. It's being in supplier diversity, we talk about this a lot in diversity masterminds, is um, a pretty thankless job. And, um, you know, we talk about their internal struggles. It's, it can be thankless and there's not a lot of like, kudos and appreciation. So that's, that's a really warm way to say, Hey, I was just calling to say congratulations on trying out that virtual trade show, <laughs> you know, but being the first one to do it. Congratulations on, you know, thank you so much for sponsoring this event. Just wanted to say hi, I'm not asking for a matchmaker. I'm not asking for anything. Just mm -hmm. say hi. I think that's a good way to start. So I also, I, I didn't want to leave you guys without like some concrete ways to position yourself to potential clients in supplier diversity right now. Like there's some concrete things um, and tools that you can use that you might not have heard about. Um, one, SAP Ariba is providing open access to their Ariba discovery. It's usually, it usually costs I think $500 and now it's free. Um, that it, it depends on your industry, if there's going to be opportunities for you, but that's basically where, um, I, I recently learned it's like one of the largest, um, marketplaces in the world to, you know, buy and sell services. So check it out. It's free right now. Go for it. Um, and, and that I learned about from an NMSDC webinar actually. Um, so that's, that's another tip that you can have is. You know, NGLCC is giving you all this great information, and because um, you know it's it's all about being diverse and also inclusive, a lot of these organizations are opening up their opportunities to you. So all BEs across the board, yeah, right? Exactly. So if you have your target target list again, your target clients, you have someone you want to reach out to, and they're giving a webinar for um, the Western Region Minority Supplier Development Council or the disability in conference. It may be that during this time, that's open to you. Um, it's free, it's available, and you can attend that. So, um, so don't, don't miss out on those opportunities. And I would encourage you, just as you're following your corporate targets and your corp you know, the corporations on Twitter and LinkedIn, also follow those other organizations because the supplier diversity people are the same people going to all of those things. So it also gives you just um, another point of outreach. So SAP Ariba, also, if you're offering COVID-19 related services, NGLCC is showcasing those companies, right? So think about that. Are you, have you even looked at NGLCC for, have you shared your story? Um, have you done those things? Those are the kind of things that um, are, that go out to the whole network and people really do, people really do look at that. Um, an LGBTBE company, Hootology, just quantified the impact of supplier diversity and how it's more important than ever. So um, I would take a look at, I, I love, I love Hootology. Um, Stephanie uh, has a great company and she's a fantastic 
go giver. And, you know, she's quantifying that impact for people. That's another good place to, to look for, you know, is supplier diversity making a difference with all that's going on? Is, is supplier diversity making a difference for these companies? Looking at that and also just using that as a way to reach out to your corporate members. Like, hey, look, you guys are, you know, were you aware of this? Do you know what a big difference you're making? Um, that's, that's a way to- Kudos, yeah, it. lots of kudos are good right now. Yeah, exactly. And kudos, kudos to UPS for being the company that was in there, you know, the, those kind of things. Um, Heather put in the chat, uh, the Canadian, the Canadian NGLCC opened their conference next week to everyone. Heather's also speaking at that conference. She'll be there. Also speaking at the conference. <laughs> on the corporate side, so, but um, shameless as plug as action there. <laughs> yeah, as is Stephanie Francis from Butology. So, I mean, but that's a great one. To, to go to where you can also, this is where NGLCC is giving you not only national opportunities, but international opportunities. So, um, and you know, per Jason's point, like, you know, that, that warmth, that presence, it's not the same as an in-person event by any means. But if you can go to it with this attitude of, what am I giving? And have I, have I looked at where, you know, have I done my research to find out, okay, where are my companies? Where, what are the needs that they have? And you're coming to a place like I'm going to provide a solution for you. Again, it's kind of it's almost your responsibility to reach out and let them know that you're there. And then finally, the um, the sip and pitch Fridays from NGLCC. If you haven't done that, you you absolutely should. Um, pitching is one of those things that you you got to get good at because it is like the number one thing everybody wants to see. Jonathan, you, do you? Like well, Jonathan's to got something to say about this. He popped on. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, so everyone watching knows, you went ahead and did all of this great promotion for us. We did not ask for it, so it means <laughs> programming. But I, I do. We're I, good I, like that, right? <laughs> about seven good Fridays, we've had now. I think it's been three rounds. There've been close to a hundred people attending per round, and you couldn't be more right. You get just as much, just like when you attend a um, LGBT biz pitch at our conference, right? Um, just as much out of watching someone else do well uh, or learn ways to improve as if you were up there. But right. every single person who has pitched has gotten some kind of corporate follow-up just by being brave enough to be there and be in the room. And I just, I want to echo something that both Heather and Liz said, because if there's one thing that uh, I try to impart anytime I'm mentoring or working with a supplier or someone in the community, the best axiom and piece of advice I've ever gotten in my entire career was you do not get 100% of the things you do not ask for. Do you, Correct. Do you want to be featured in an NGLCC blog? Tell us all about it. <laughs> it's yeah. our pleasure to sing about your business. Uh, are, you know, things like that. Um, let us know what you're up to so we can help be your champion. And then I just want to share one other thing that actually happened today that is a perfect dovetail to what you're saying about using uh, video to, to really share your personality and get to know someone. Uh, part of the supplier diversity challenge and, and narrative is also they're, they're like your agent. They want you to win and they go yeah. to bat for you with procurement. They're not the decision maker. And that's such an important thing to remember. But one of the things that we can do now in this moment when we're sitting doing nothing but screen time is leverage those connections, build that strong relationship with the supplier rep so that you can then say, hey, now that we're, we're all home, you know me, you know you can vouch for how good my business is, could you help me get five minutes over Zoom or Teams with the actual category manager, the person yes. who would be the decision maker on a business like mine now that we've spent the time with you getting to know me and we can help with the NGLCC facilitate that relationship. So just all that to say, you're all spot on and, and telling it like it is. Oh. Um, but <laughs> important, people watching, ask. Our job is to help you, um, but we we are we are terrific supplier diversity advocates and, and activists. We are not such great clairvoyants and psychics, so we have to know from you what you need to succeed, and we'll make it happen. I mean, Jonathan, in general, that's great relationship advice because I love people to read my mind. Doesn't always go so well when you expect people to do that. <laughs> Yeah, we know, remember we had a couple wins like that. It's, to Jonathan's point, we used to ask. I think one of the things that people struggle with, Jonathan, to your point, is that they just feel like they need permission to, to do some of these asks. And so we had a, actually a couple of our um, Diversity Masterminds participants. They really wanted to sit with some, some, a specific corporation at an event. And we said, 
So ask because they need to fill their tables. Like reach out and ask them. And she could call us back. She's like, Oh my God, it worked. I'm sitting at their table. I couldn't believe that it worked. And so I think that you're absolutely right. If you ask something, I mean, you're going to get no's. You're going to get people who are like, uh, we're full. But you definitely, if you ask, you know, it can do it. And then to your other point, Jonathan, about pitches. So at the WeBank pitch, which I participated in, I was sitting in the audience watching everybody else. I had to check out the competition on the first round. And the first round was like 180 people. And then the second round was 20. And then the final was four, right? So I was watching everybody in the first round and I was sitting right in front of some corporations. And over and over again, I heard them say, oh, wait, we should talk to them afterwards. We should talk to them afterwards. Oh, that's such a great business. Oh, we could totally use that. They would have never, and these are people who didn't even make it to the, to the second round, but because their, their information got out there, the corporations were like, oh, I'm going to follow up with them. I'm going to follow up with them. So even if you bomb, which you probably won't, but even if you just bomb on the pitch, it's still amazing exposure. And if you're worried about bombing, we have a pitch practice. Special mastermind. <laughs> we have a pitch practice module for you. You won't bomb. You won't bomb. Well, and that's Alicia uh, and, and the entire supplier diversity team can tell you we've got mentorship programs that help people tailor pitches and grow their business. We have formal and informal programs like this um, and people who take advantage of them truly succeed. So um, I, I just want to toss that out to, to, to Alicia and to remind folks that we've been putting, uh, reaching out to SupplierDiversity at NGLCC.org. They're your team. You know, they, they, are, they are your best resources. Yes, you know, most definitely. And we enjoy, you know, providing these opportunities for you all because we are here to help you succeed as well. We want to see you all win. So, um, yeah, so be sure to just email us and we'll do our best to connect you with who you want to be connected with. And, you know, you have Heather and Liz is giving you wonderful advice on how to connect with our corporate partners or whoever the other businesses that you want to connect with and um, have all these different opportunities. So, great. Okay, so we mentioned, so that's some of the opportunities to highlight yourself and the visibility, but to, John, to Jonathan's point at the beginning, what else is available to me? You know, it's, it's not all about, you know, business development, business sales, sales, sales. So um, Bank of America scholarship for diverse business owners um, for education, it's, not, it's the executive programs like Tuck, Wharton, Kellogg Business School, that kind of thing but also more. They will um, give you a scholarship for capacity building, for six segment training, for lead certification, and all, you, be, all because of your certification. So look into that. Can they use it for diversity masterminds, Liz? They can. Oh, as a matter of fact. They can use it to take a diversity masterminds course. Um, and uh, also, you know, we mentioned virtual trade shows. We're a part of Merck's virtual trade show on June 17th. Um, and that's an opportunity to meet supply chain professionals, prime suppliers, it's really hard to meet them, um, and, and advocacy organizations like NGLCC. So that's happening on June 17th. And then this isn't necessarily as a result of certification, but for any of the women business owners on here, the Cartier Awards, I, um, I really like the idea of the Cartier Awards because there's just a few winners, but you get a ton of money. <laughs> you, get you can win $100,000. So, um, so I like to highlight those awards. There's, um, I, I believe, a regional award winner from each continent uh, that can win. So anyway, those are some other things that are available to you. Alicia, Alicia mentioned the mentorship and things like that. So if you feel like, I, you know, I'm not getting anywhere, maybe take advantage of some of these other things, which one, it's an opportunity to educate yourself and grow as a business owner, which is invaluable. And then two, sometimes you're sitting at the table with other business owners that can help you. And then three, sometimes it's an opportunity like with Mark to, to sit down with the actual corporations. So these are, there's a ton you can do during this time. Um, and we just wanted to give you a few things so that you have an overview of, of sort of where, where it is, even though it feels uncomfortable to reach out, there's ways to do it. Um, we wanted to give you some concrete things, like here's some just steps you can take. Um, and I saw some people like, I just signed up for Google Alert. So like there, Good done. For you. Awesome. Off your list. Um, and then some things that you can think, you know, there's still opportunities available to you for, um, you know, with scholarships and awards for essentially free money. So, so think about those things. Um, 
do we have any questions or anything? And I can go on to the, no, I don't see any. Um, so so we, can, we can wrap up now and answer any additional questions that people have. If you've been holding back on your questions, now's the time. Jonathan, are you opening up for everyone to ask questions or are we just gonna leave it chat? Uh, anyone, uh, yeah, please, to anyone who's uh, got a question to share, please do use the chat function. So okay. uh, the raise hand so that we know you would like to be called on uh, and then we can make sure that uh, you're either uh, unmuted or your questions read, your preference. Awesome. So, so just to wrap up, um, so when you're thinking about all this and building relationships, um, I think a lot of times when people think about the supplier diversity networks, they think about networking. Networking, 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 and networking is going to lead to sales. <laughs> but there's a lot of different parts of the business development continuum, and you can be working on any one of those aspects right now. Networking is one of them, but it starts with that market research, that to seeing where you fit in, seeing what your contacts are responding to, what they care about. Um, and then there's a, you know, the part of meeting them, building a rapport, building that relationship. And then once you've built that relationship, where do you go from there? You know, are you asking for, are you asking for an introduction to the category buyer? Or are you asking them just to view a demo? Or are you asking them some, you know, to participate in an event that you're having? Are you a part of the leadership for your regional NGLCC organization and you're asking them to sponsor something? What, you know, think about what your different asks are and how you can make that work um, before this. And then, and sales then comes after that. But remember, it's not just a straight line from, okay, we networked, where's my sales? And if you take one thing from that, take that. Um, you know, we talked about connecting outside of events. There's, um, there's a lot of different ways to do it. And, you know, from the pitch competitions to the, to LinkedIn, to the social media, the, the Google alerts, how are you doing that? Um, talking with them in the chat, congratulating, acknowledging, appreciating, and saying thank you is all really important right now. And, um, and go back to your value add. If you're still feeling like you don't have something to offer, it's probably time to hone that value add. What does make you different? What makes you stand out? Because you're offering a solution that people need, right? Your clients are telling you, that your solution was awesome, that they didn't even know they needed it, and then they had it, and now they can't live without it. So right. those are the kind of things that um, you, you wanna be thinking about and have that in your mind when you're reaching out, um, that you are solving a problem for people. In some way, it doesn't even have to be you're the solution, again, right? It could be that you know of a solution for them that you've seen. Right. And then this, is us so this is how you can contact us you can email me or heather go to our website so i did want to um you know we talked a little bit about the diversity masterminds modules we are giving um the participants of this webinar uh a discount so if you use the code pride 20 um and on our pride month you can get 20 percent off of any of the modules you get or the full diversity masterminds course um, and yeah, and you can find this here. Looks like there's some people in the chat. And y'all, just so you know, we are launching a brand new website in just a few weeks. So we'll, we'll, we'll shout it all over NGLCC and they can share it with everybody because we're very excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, there's a question about the pitch and sip. Is it only for NGLCC certified suppliers? Uh, all NGLC programs online are open to everyone. Um, and we, oh, really? Yeah, we, we want this to, for our entire network and the extended network, our affiliate chambers, our corporate partners are participating. Spread the word. Um, you know, too many people think of NGLCC as the, as the best kept secret. Um, it won't be if you tell everyone in your orbit. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a great way uh, to get involved and, and and share the love and make sure that your your partners and potential colleagues that you could be working with are are part of all of these opportunities. Um, so they do not have to be an LGBTBE. 
No, uh, we have, we've had, we've had allies, we've had other community members, you know, remember nice. the LCC spearheaded a, a network called the National Business Inclusion Consortium, the NBIC, which right. represents WeBank, the U.S. Hispanic Chamber, uh, the U.S. Black Chamber, and many more right. organizations. And so we're all working collaboratively to make sure all opportunities can be shared whenever possible. Um, but I did want to also mention that our uh, every one of these webinar Wednesdays has a wrap out blog that we host on our page and will be shared on the webinars page. So all of this great information from Liz and Heather will be there. We'll share all of their links and resources. Uh, and we just really appreciate you both being with us. Um, and I want to remind everyone we've got the chat window open. Well, we've got the last few minutes here. Any last burning questions for these two literal masterminds uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and for Alicia and the supplier team? Yeah, hit us up. We also have, Liz and I love to do this. So if you have a, if you want to try to stump us, we have a hashtag, or for you old folks like me, number sign. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag stump diversity masterminds. And you can either send us a video, you can send us a question, and we post them with the answers. We give your company a big shout out for asking the question. But yeah, we love people to try to stump us with their supplier diversity questions, whether it be business development, company development, or just what do I do with this certification that I have? Yeah, absolutely. Well, as we have uh, from all of us- uh, Pound sign. I love Jason, he's old like me, he said pound sign. Yeah. I actually called to get tech support one time and I said, this is my pastor, then no, 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 number sign three. And she's like, what's a number sign? I'm like, <laughs> hashtag lady. <laughs> Amazing. Um, well, uh, in just the last few seconds here, as, as any final questions may be coming in, I do want to remind everyone too uh, about, I'm going to share my own screen here and return to um, our list of, of opportunities and programs. We want to remind everyone that, uh, as you said, Webinar Wednesday is coming back. A week from now, we'll be doing conversations about virtual pride. Um, and, and to Liz and Heather's point, a great way to uh, pay it forward and be a go-giver for someone else in the community is making sure that anything you're doing to celebrate pride this year, as we're all calling it pride inside, can be sourced from an LGBT supplier. Uh, get your t-shirts, get your drinks, get your chocolates, get your, get your streamers, your hats, and everything else that might be going on, especially if you're doing a presentation for uh, any kind of potential corporate client or, or an NGO out there. It's a great way to show off your support for others in the community, and it will return tenfold. So check Are there out. any uh, NGLCC certified vodka, gin, wine companies? Oh yes, um, and, and definitely check the LGBT, uh, the, our, our my.nglcc.org directory for that, but I'll personally okay. say, uh, I have been sending gifts to people in the, in the press that I've been working with over the years, telling NGLCC story every year uh, for Pride, and I've been using um, Restorative Republics, which is in uh, the DC area, woman-owned, lesbian-owned distillery company that converted, that not only makes delicious vodka, uh, gin, and whiskey and others, but is also converting stills to creating um, uh, hand sanitizer. sanitizer and hospital cleaner. So amazing. Yeah. So, we're so I know a lot of women owned ones, yep. um, but I just wasn't sure about NGLCC certified ones. So we'll add that to the rotation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then someone who recently presented at Sip and Pitch Fridays was uh, Ben with Five North Chocolates, which is a perfect pride gift. It's uh, the first LGBT owned company to put the LGBT owned and operated uh, NGLCC certified sticker on their packaging it was covered. Nice. In the it was cool. since then many I love that. So think about that as a way to show off your, your, your literal, your tangible commitment. And, and certainly our directory of local affiliate chambers now in more than 50 cities across America can help you not only find LGBT owned businesses, but also LGBT owned businesses owned by people of color so that we can be sure we're supporting every diverse community during this time. Nice. Nice. Yeah, Brian, we all love Tito's, but they're not Diversum. So we try to <laughs> buy directly yeah. from the Diversum. <laughs> um, Alicia, did we miss anything to tell uh, our amazing stakeholders watching? Yeah, no, you, you covered it all, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Alicia. Thanks for all the help putting this together as always and for being a great uh, moderator and presenter. And to Liz and Heather, Thank you for all you do, uh, for being masterminds, for being such great supporters of the NGLCC and part of our family. Um, but to everyone watching, thank you. We look forward to seeing you next week uh, and then next Friday, Sip and Pitch Friday. So uh, stay safe, stay informed, stay connected, ask for help from the NGLCC and take great care of each other. We're, we're all in this together. 
So mm. thank you again to Liz and Heather and Diversity Masterminds. You're awesome. To all, of our, you. all yeah. of our attendees, thank you. And we will see you all next week. Yes, big virtual hugs, everybody. Virtual <laughs> <laughs> Bye, thank you, Bye. Bye.